Welcome, one and all. It's been a while since I stood on my own two feet again. Not really, but whatever. <sighs> Feels good to be live again for in the first time in a while. And <sighs> I do have videos in the works, but I've just been sidetracked with, you know, more important stuff. Like, you know, trying to... Yeah, find the love of my life, go out to the city, have good fun, all that good stuff. It's been, I think right now we're, it's the middle, yeah, it's the middle of April, we're approaching May, and I feel like I've made considerable amounts of progress since I start, first started going out to the city. And yes, that is PyCon's theme from the V. I highly recommend you check out Gladius. I mean, when you look up those themes, that channel should come up. He's really good at making covers. The one he hasn't mastered yet is Vegeta's base theme, which I would abuse the crap out of. After all, I play that one every time I go into the city. For, like, goth nights, metal shows, all that good stuff. I went to the Philly Punk Rock Flea Market yesterday. I was only able to be there for about two hours. But I was able to meet some new people. And funnily enough, my my anger and my hatred towards the Eagles is starting to diminish a little bit, but not by much. I've already made it clear that the 2024 season would be their last chance with me. And a little bit of a disclaimer, if you hear planes fly over, sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. They choose to fly over at this point. And because of my current situation, I still have to film and I still have to stream outside, which ain't great. And it, it limits my opportunities for video making. Now, one the, the video that I do have planned, I probably will release clips here and there and stuff like right off the cuff. The video where I recorded, where I saved R, one of RPF's videos, that was right off the cuff. I saw that. I was like, OK, I need to I need to kind of modify that one yeah it was it was when it was when uh it was one of joey shake's community posts and it was something to, i forget what it was like i forget what the message was but i think i said along the lines my fear is the possibility of the eagles never winning another super bowl again and i wasn't too surprised that a few jackasses responded to me and RPF took the time to come to my defense, and I and I and just in case his channel were to be taken down, which it inevitably does, I re I recorded it, I downloaded that video before that could happen, and I re-uploaded it to my video with my own little spin on it. That wasn't planned. That was like right off the cuff. That was an opportunity I could not pass up. The video, the next video I have planned is the top 10 boss themes in video games. That one I'm looking forward to making, but it, it shouldn't be that difficult. It, it, all I got to do is... I'm go my plan for that is... I'm probably, gonna, I'm probably not going to talk much. I'm not going to talk about the themes. I'm just going to play very... Sh I'm going to play the themes for brief periods. I'm not going to tell you some entries. You, you're just going to have to stay tuned for that. Whenever I do decide to have the time to to upload that you know i've just been focused on going to philly going to goth nights having a grand old time now this is something i highly recommend a lot of people to do now goth may not be your type of thing and, and keep in mind it's primarily it's primarily a music themed culture it's a music themed subculture kind of like punk rock is they they like that uh new wave from the they like a lot of tracks from the 80s there's some track it can range from new wave or dark wave as they call it they listen to a lot of techno there's some gothic rock and and there's typo negative which is a metal theme fun fact the band typo negative actually recorded a theme for kane from the WWE look up typo negative out of the fire and you'll know what i'm talking about that theme kicks ass, although it doesn't actually have, it doesn't actually have, it doesn't feature Peter Steele's lyrics, but it's still a kick-ass theme. Absolutely, just, just 
Look up, look up some of the local venues in the city. There, emo night is everywhere. Emo night goes all across the world. I think they were they were at the Underground Arts on April sixth, but I was already I went to a Twid Tribes show. That was something that was unplanned. It was like right off the cuff. And I and speaking of wrestlers, I actually met an indie wrestler last week at one of these shows. I walked right up to him and said that his contacts, his contact lenses look really cool. Now, I've never worn contact lenses in my life, and I actually kind of do plan to for the future. Now, keep in mind, this was this is event exclusive, kind of like my spiked epaulets, you know, the shoulder pads, the shoulder pads that a lot of that military generals wear or a lot of like ceremonial. During ceremonial times, uh, you'll see these military officers wear these pads on their shoulders. They call them epaulets. I wore I have a spiked. I have ones with spikes on it and chain tassels, the ones that kind of dangle off of it. And I do, and I did post it on Instagram. And that's the thing: when you meet people, they don't ask for phone numbers; they ask for Instagram accounts. Now, I've already met I've already met some people. Not, of course, not everybody I met exchanged that. In fact, I've even gotten blocked a couple times. I mean, I'll admit where I'm at fault. I'll admit where I made a mistake. There was one that I didn't talk to for an entire month because. That one wasn't really active and she was gay anyway. And that's the thing. That's another that's another thing. When you meet people when you meet people, especially when they're two girls, there's a possibility that it's a gay couple, lesbian. And that's the thing. When you when you go to these shows, when when you engage with these subcultures, you're gonna encounter you're gonna encounter some homosexuality. You're gonna encounter some transsexuality. You're gonna encounter you're gonna encounter lesbians. Well, gay can be uh, gay could be used for both male and female. Although there's there's been more gay females than gay males, but still. So you you just gotta kind of have to. And and I usually I usually just do. Usually I do, I try to just do my own thing. I mean, of course, the goal is to find somebody, and even if I do finally find somebody and a man. For all I know, I may have already, and I just don't even know it yet. But yeah, I like kind of like to do my own thing, and if they uh, they approach you, cool. But uh, Slita told me that you don't really want to approach them; that you you kind of want them to approach you. You just do your own thing. But actually, it's actually not a bad idea to approach them. It's just a matter of whether they're engaging in the conversation or not. And when you, you, you got to have, find an opening if they, I usually just comment on the necklace that they're wearing or something like that. If I even have anything worthwhile to say, and I, it usually leads to talking about gemstones, especially if that, some of them will wear a necklace that has a gemstone on it. And fun, funnily enough, not every one of them knows what gemstone they have on. They just pick something that's a certain color. The ring I had, the ring I, that you see that you've seen on my left hand in the past, the one I wear on my pinky is an onyx ring, and the one on my right is an obsidian. Funny thing is, they're two different stones, yet they have the same meaning. They're meant to, they're meant to diminish negative energy. Although I don't really know how much that works. You tried, uh, you tried to hook up with a girl back in 2011, and it didn't necessarily work out for you. What did you? Were you were you a bit too clingy? Did you did you both have interest and it just didn't really and she just didn't have interest? Did she just lose interest over time or did she, did she not have any to begin with? And that's another thing. I had to give somebody advice the other night at at the show in Warehouse on Watts. They got the they got monthly shows in yeah not ever I can't name. I can't really talk about the Philly shows that much because not everybody on this pl not everybody on the stream lives in Philadelphia, and not everybody that is living in Philadelphia is interested in going to these. So it's I'm very limited. Now I I I go to Philly because that's where all the action is. There's South Jersey is like a fucking ghost town except except for when they have shows in Atlantic City. I went to Ghost Mart in late March. 
And I'm going to be going back there in late May. Same venue, the Anchor Rock Club on New York Ave. Yesterday, I went to the Philly Punk Rock Flea Market. I couldn't, I didn't really find anything that I really wanted to buy because I had a conversation with somebody else who, who much like me, is very picky about what she buys. That one I didn't get an Instagram from. The thing is, I don't really like to ask them for them. They use, The funny thing is they usually ask me for my account, which kind of shoots my heart rate up a little bit because I'm kind of a controversial personality for, uh, for those, if you haven't figured it out already. And I think I might have, ac I'm just afraid of accidentally pushing people away, which I do have a bad habit of doing. Ah, oh, I fucking, uh, that's fucking brutal. That's, that's fucking brutal, man. But if you're interested and you want to go back out there, just, just don't, uh, just go out there, have a good time. If it, if it, and it's not just goth events. You could be into, you could be into pop. You could be into hip hop, no matter what. You just look up the venues and see what kind of shows they're holding. Of course. There's sites where, like for example, I, I I find out events via Philly Goth, but not every, but it doesn't host every single event. They don't have, they don't have the uh, May 31st event. They don't have that show, despite the fact that it's, despite the fact that it's literally a fucking Goth event, but it's not advertised on Philly Goth. Funny thing is, they don't have anything. They don't really have anything advertised for June and beyond. Although I think it, you got to give it time before they start announcing that. But I met, I briefly met the guy who runs Vortex, which is a big event that happens like on, on the penultimate Friday of every month. And he always hosts it on, on warehouse on Watts. It's like right in center city. It's like right. It's very close to broad street. It's, it's right around the corner from broad street. Because I because of my truck accident, I have to take the train to get to warehouse on Watts. I have to take three. I have to take two trains. I gotta walk to the. I gotta walk to the speed line. Take the take the speed line into the city, and then take the SEPTA. I take two, no. I have to take three trains. I take the speed line, and then I take the first SEPTA to City Hall, and then I take the SEPTA at City Hall and go north, and then I reach the street that uh, until it stops at the right around the corner from where this place is. And the other the other night when I went, the tr the train had two frigging delays. When it reached when it reached frigging Broadway in Camden, I had it, I I was literally it was delayed due to quote unquote police activity, and I had to sit there for about forty five. I, I don't know how long I was sitting there. I was like sitting there for about forty five minutes, and then there was another delay. The thing, the thing with Google, the Google Maps didn't really tell me exactly how. It gave me a different route than it did last time, but at least I was able to figure it out. And even with the even with the plethora of delays that I ran into, I still managed to get to the venue early. And now this can work for me. This can work in my favor, but it can just as easily work against me. I'm usually the first person there and one of the last people to leave. I was the first one there and the last one to leave. Yeah, uh, the other night I was like literally in fucking bumping distance of somebody who blocked me last week. I'll admit, it's like it's like Vince McMahon said about Steve Austin back in 2002. I always think about what could I have done differently? How could what could I have done to have this not happen? But if someone is not willing to sit down and discuss intelligently how to resolve an issue, then my hands are tied. It is what it is. She wasn't available anyway. I just wanted it was a I just wanted to know how those two met. I wanted to know how he accomplished it so I can do it too. Now, the when right before that happened, I met this indie wrestler who has this like gothic gimmick and he's into the scene. He he attends the shows. He lives in Atlanta. I told him I told him to link up with Wary Hyden when he finally goes back home. He tore he goes around the world because, in the hopes of getting booked for local indie shows. 
his name is Trevor Aon. I believe I advertise. I believe I have him in a community post. Oh, absolutely. I, I know all about that Reaper. So it, it, look up, look up horror, con, look up horror conventions near you. That's another thing they're into. You, the thing is, the, the thing about the subculture is they're into like dark wave. Like they, they listen to techno. They like new, a little bit of Gothic rock. Common bands you'll hear are like bands like the cure sisters of mercy who funnily enough, don't even consider them. They didn't like being referred to as a goth band, but come on, with a song like Marion, which is their undisputed masterpiece, come on, you're never going to live down that label. There's that, there's Depeche Mode, obviously, there's the Smiths, there's New Order, and there's a lot of techno, like Nine Inch Nails. You got... You got Typo Negative, which is their metal representation. Although a lot of them are into metal as well. But they're also into a, they're also very heavily into the horror genre, and rightfully so. A lot of common stereotypical favorite films include The Addams Family from the early 90s with uh, Joan Cusack, Christina Ricci. Funnily, uh, the funny thing is, the first the first film with Christina Ricci that I actually saw was Afterlife. The f I only really heard of that film because I used to watch clips on the WWE website back in 2010, and they advertised that on their site. It it's a it's a film about someone who died and was unwilling and refused to accept the fact that she was dead, and her mortician was played by Liam Neeson, and and a little bit of a spoiler and you're probably going to like this she's naked she's naked toward the ends of the film because he cut he cuts her dress off when he fin to prepare her body for the afterlife when she finally accepts that she's not living anymore and the movie ends in a kind of a cliffhanger where her her grieving boyfriend who's played by Justin Long he ends up looking, he looks, uh, he tries to look for where she's buried, and then the screen cuts to black, and all of a sudden he's waking up on the table, deny, saying that he's not dead. But Christina Ricci plays the little girl in that, in uh, The Addams Family. Other favorites include 1993's Dracula, which is another one of my favorites, with Gary Oldman, which is actually the most novel accurate. And I believe it's the only live-action Dracula to turn into a giant bat creature, which is also nice. He shares a Castlevania Dracula takes a lot from that film, which is also which also takes from the novel. I love how I love how Dracula is a boss in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up becoming a full-on playable character. Although the Smash Bros. modding scene. You, we, we got Smash Remix, Smash 64's rematch with an included roster, including the likes of Bowser, Ganondorf. Funny how Ganondorf was the very last character added to Super Smash Bros. Melee, but in but in uh, Smash Remix, which is the Smash 64 mod, he was the very first character, and, he, and he's uh, regularly a clone of Captain Falcon. And there's also the famous Project M, which I've been playing for a while. And then there's the Smash Ultimate mod HDR. There's really nothing to that one because it's still fairly new. There's they're very limited. Right now with Smash Ult with Smash Ultimate's modding scene, you can't really add a character without replacing an already existing one. So the only thing they can really do right now is tweak characters' move sets. Like for example, they gave Ganondorf his float from Ocarina of Time. They gave Donkey Kong they gave Donkey Kong the ability to summon a barrel. They gave Bowser a fireball, and his forward smash is a reference to Bowser's inside story instead of his WWE dropkick. Oh, you're about to turn 32? Nice. I turned 30 this past February. And le yesterday, at the Punk Rock Flea Market, I was only able to really buy a like little Aerodactyl. And I met, I met a few people. There, was a, there were these two girls that I met. I, I 
the, right now it's said that they're best friends, but they could be gay. I, one of them may be gay, but the one that's talking to me more might not be. I don't know what's going on with that. And I, I kind of started, they were with, they were with her father and uh, I kind of started talking to him because they brought their dog and I was like kind of intimidated. Because I don't know if he was going to jump on me. He was, he was a little dog. I don't know if he was going to jump on me or he was going to lick me or whatnot. And he's like, you could pet. They told me I could pet him. And I forget how I forget how the conversation really started. It was like kind of a blur. But then all of a sudden, I'm like, I've, I've put my I've put my hands up in my uh, my hands clamped together pose. And then one of them says that she likes my skull ring. And I'm like, oh, thank you. And I think I, I think she was wearing a ring that I complimented. I'm not positive. I don't remember. And we started talking about gemstones. We started talking about venues that we were going to. She she told me that she's not familiar with many of the goth venues that I've been going to. She introduced me to new hardcore venues that are in the city, such as Blood Bank, uh, Danny's Lounge. I probably uh, it's probably not pretty pointless for me to men mention the names of the venues because most of you on here don't live in Philly, so it's not really of much use to you. But and there's also a, like a Halloween haunted house attraction. They're introduced. And she told me that she wanted to me. She was she wanted to know about the shows that I've been going to in exchange for introducing me to new venues. And then next thing, and one thing led to another. She asked me for my Instagram. And the other one asked for mine as well. And the conversation ended. And that was that. And I, I eventually ran into another one. And I kind of com I commented on her necklace because I didn't even know she, uh, she had a heart tattoo on her neck. I didn't, I, I, because I, I kind of have nearsighted vision a little bit. From far away, it looked like she was wearing a big gemstone necklace. So I complimented on her necklace, not knowing that it was actually a heart-shaped tattoo and not a gemstone. And I, I said, sorry, I thought you were wearing a gemstone there for a second. And we started, we started talking about gemstones, including the ones I had on my ring aforementioned. And we started talking about some of the events that we went to. I, we didn't end up exchanging Instagram info or anything like that. I decided to not push it any further. I didn't want to try to tail her out to try to get her. To tr That's one of the things I've had a bad habit of doing in the past is I try to talk to somebody and then I start, I start shadowing them in the hopes of getting their Instagram info at the very last second before they leave. That's something you don't necessarily want to do because... If you didn't get it initially, if she didn't ask for it, then I don't think anything's going to materialize. But I do know this. There is a possibility that I'll run into this one at one of these venues in the future. And there's one that I met at Warehouse on Watts the other night. And I just... We didn't exchange info, but she told me that she lived right around the corner from Warehouse on Watts. And I told her a couple weeks from now, Vortex is coming. I want to, might want to uh, eye that one up. And I start, I heard from, I heard from the first set of girls I was talking to. I'm not sure they might, uh, she might be gay. I'm not sure, but I'm not going to ask or anything like that. And we started, we started talking about, I started giving her links to the events that I'm going to. And then today I found out that she went to the flea market to celebrate her 18th birthday, and they actually posted her happy birthday. Her friend posted a happy birthday post a day late. So, uh, in my mind, I, I literally just met a 17 year old, and my fucking heart rate went through the roof. I'm like, oh fuck! But turns out, she went to, she got to go to the punk rock flea market to celebrate her 18th birthday, which was nice. And this, however, this still leads to another problem. A lot of these, a lot of these events and a lot of these venues that you go to, they, 
their age is 21 and up. So she's not old enough. She's 18, but and she's not old enough to go to any of these. But I told her that I would keep an eye out for places that I go to that she could go to as well. And that her friend might be interested in. And they're practic they're de facto sisters. And I'm not making the same mistake that I made with my ex-girlfriend. That that is not gonna happen again. I'm not gonna try to well, we're not actually an item or anything like that. I don't know what's going to materialize, and that's the thing. And and one piece of advice that I can give any of you is when you meet somebody, when you meet somebody, and you even when you exchange, even when she's available. Even when she's not with anybody, even if she does exchange Instagram info, all that good stuff, you're not out of the woods just yet. You're not safe yet because you use that time to get to know each other. You, you got to make sure that she's comfortable with you messaging her regularly if if you so chose to do so. This one, I I made sure to say, hey, listen, you'll have to forgive me if I message you often, but I try not, to, but I'm not, I try not to do so. I don't I don't try to message her two to three times after I deliver the first one. That's something my mother taught me. You wanna when you message some when you message them online, you wanna wait for them to respond before you send another one. And if they don't respond, it's usually they're busy with life and stuff like that. She tells me that she works a lot and that she's only off like Friday to Sunday, which is good. Which is no, I do. I do not have one, Slita. I don't. And I was just, ma I was just making, a, I was just making a point to everybody that even when you do find somebody, even if you do exchange, in, uh, now keep in mind, people don't ask for phone numbers anymore. They ask for Instagram info. Now, usually, I'm not the one that does. I'm not the one that does the asking. Exactly. That I just said that. I just said that you you don't really want you don't want to blow up her feet or anything like that. You want to just like when you're still talking to her in person after you exchange the info, you want to at least tr tr mention and just kind of let her know ahead of time if it's OK to message her regularly or something like that. And just just kind of have an just kind of lay forth an understanding. And 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 just and just be reassuring that, hey. If you're not able to respond, it's all right. You're busy. I'm not going to message you again until you get the chance to respond. You know, you can respond whenever the hell you want, whenever you get the chance. That's all right. Now, I hate to I hate to mention this motherfucker, but the California kitty diddler that we know, he was notorious for coming on way too strong. He was notorious for coming on way too strong, messaging them three to four times after the first message and then after a full day say how come you haven't messaged me back yet it's like what the fuck are you doing no you you, you don't necessarily want to chase you don't want to chase but you don't want to shadow now i actually surprisingly enough i've actually had i actually have made good i actually man i managed to have good what's the word i'm looking for I think I've I've gained good traction by actually approaching. However, once you approach, you come up with you come up with something that you, to say, and it's just like for example, one of the one of the girls at this event in Warehouse on Watts, she had a light up mask. She had a light up mask that she bought off Timu. I said that that mask is that mask is sick. I see it in the I see it in the po Instagram posts all the time for the shows. And she told me that it was just something she got off Timu, and we started, we started having a conversation. And come to find out later, one of the dudes told me that she was actually available. Kind of wish I knew that, but the conversation didn't exactly extend to the point where anybody suggested exchanging Instagram info. So either, either they either they'll share it or they won't. And it's it's I usually have worse luck when I'm the one that requests the Instagram. Oh yeah, you you definitely want to be very careful with that Reaper. A lot of them, 
there's a lot of porn bots on there. Funny thing is, there's actually a few uh, OnlyFans models that actually followed me. And I, I follow them back and I do engage with them, but only because they followed me. I'm not, t I'm not taking them that seriously. I'm not going to ask them out or anything like that. First of all, one of them lives in L.A. Oh, absolutely. Abs absolutely, dude. You, you, you kind of keep the conversations. You kind of keep the conversations going. If they if they end abruptly, they end abruptly. And either way, it, it, it life goes on. And also, you're also not safe if you just want to be friends with somebody. You're not safe there either. There's somebody that I met at Go Smart, and a, and a couple weeks later I saw her again, and. I was a little too clingy, which is something I do struggle with sometimes, and she fucking blocked me. Now, keep in mind, that's, that was somebody who was already spoken for, so I was not interested. The only reason, I, the only reason why I stuck around is because I wanted to know how those two met. I wanted to know how he accomplished it, so I can do it too. And going back to, and that was when, right before... That was right before I walked up to this one dude because uh, he was wearing sick red contact lenses, and we st and he revealed to me that he was an indie wrestler and he was in Philly because he was booked for he was booked for a show, and he he was able to see he was able to see this Twin Tribes show, and we had kind of a heart to heart conversation about life and everything. And he lives in Atlanta, so I told him when he meets where he's hiding in, in the city. When he comes back home to Atlanta, I told him to link up with him. I already got them to follow each other on Instagram. I told I told them separately they're both good dudes. You won't be attracted to one that you're uh, you won't be friends with one you're attracted to. Uh that's where I kind of differ. But that's uh, but I keep my options open. It's extreme. It, it can be extremely difficult. You're kind of playing with fire there, when you do. It's it, 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 you never heard of him. It's an indie wrestler. It's very small time. His name is Trevor Aon. He's Atlanta based. He has he's into the goth scene, and it's not just a wrestling gimmick that he has. He does wear he does wear black and red wrestling gear. And find it, and he's all, he's also a huge fan. He's also a fan of Tech Nine. He's a fan of Dragon Ball Z. I also found out he's a fan of Dragon Ball Z as well as being a fan of, also being a fan of Tech Nine, the rap group, the rapper Tech Nine, which is one of my favorites, one of the most underrated, as well as Fifty Cent. And I just wanted to know for sure. He reassured. One thing that really struck a chord, one thing that really hit home for me is he reassured me that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do, that I'm making all the right moves, that I just got to keep going back there. I just got to keep putting myself out there. But I got to just do go with the flow, do my thing, and eventually the dice will roll in my favor. And if you ask me, I'm fucking tired of rolling snake guys, but there's already there's already a few that I've met that I don't know if anything's going to materialize. However, I don't want to think about that too much. All you got to do, I just got to just play it by ear. Just, I just got to play it by ear and just see what happens. But I may, I mainly go now to just meet, I mainly go to, to enjoy myself. I like go, I like going out. I like, I love, I love vibing to that music. I really do. At the end of the day, like I said before, goth is primarily a music scene. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it, and you don't necessarily have to be dressed up all the time to be considered it. You just gotta, you just gotta love, you just gotta love the music, and you just, and you don't really want to be an elitist because that's kind of a negative. And Desert actually, I'm. Uh, Desert actually introduced me to a channel called It's Black Friday, and she's going to release a documentary about goths all across the world. And I and she did a live stream last week, and I, w I went on there and interacted, 
and they actually taught me now on instagram i have a spe i have my own custom cake recipe called dragon's blood now dragon's blood my dragon's blood cake my dragon's blood cake is red velvet with is dragon's blood it's red velvet cake with dark chocolate icing with wild cherry pepsi poured on the bottom layer and maraschino cherry juice poured on the top but i kind of want to make that dark chocolate icing black now they taught me how to make my icing black, put real, put dark cocoa powder into buttercream icing, and they kind of put, they kind of warned that adding too much black or red food coloring can cause the cake to be a bit bitter. Although my cakes never had that problem, but it is something to take into consideration. I want to be I want to be friends I I, I want to be friends with them and uh, but if if I'm attracted to them I'm not going to I'm just going to I'm not going to express any true feelings or anything like that. I'll I'll give I'll compliment because it's my honest because I'm just being honest. I I just say that I always I can organically say, "Hey, I like that necklace." Not because I want to be with them or anything like that. But because I, I I can always I always appreciate good jewelry. I'm kind of a fashion freak, in case you haven't noticed. I can always appreciate good jewelry, good gems gemstones, material. They like they like a lot of re they like a lot of uh, velvet. They're also into they're also into leather boots. Hey, later, man. Glad you could glad you could stop by. I do plan. I do plan to open the stream pretty soon. But I told where he hiding at hey, that I was going live. But I don't know what the hell he's doing. But it is what it is. He might have something. It might have something going. Now he's more able. He's. I'm not gonna tell you what happened. I'm not gonna tell you. That there's something that did happen with him. But I'm not going to tell you that. You're just going to have to find out yourself from him if he's willing to relay that info. Because there's some things that he tells me that he doesn't necessarily... He, he tells me things that he doesn't really tell a lot of other people. And he doesn't really want me relaying that info. And I wouldn't want him to do the same thing. So that the least thing I could do is respect that. And another thing... One thing that you guys probably would have liked at the uh, Punk Rock Flea Market is... They did. They did f sell sports merchandise. Like a, a few vendors, a few vendors had some uh, Eagles, Phillies, and MC Philly and RPF were on stream earlier talking about their disappointment with the Phils. And now I'm not really that into baseball, and I'm kind of on my way out of the sports community. I've already made plans. I'm already ma oh, making plans to join new ones, at the very least expand. But right now, my living situ my current situation is very difficult for me to really expand my channel the way I want to. Now, I've been wearing like I going back to the spiked ep the spiked shoulder pads, the epaulets that I wear on my jackets when I go to those nights. I mean, I'm kind of stepping my game up. I mentioned that I, I've never worn contacts before, but I do want to wear contact lenses, like colored contacts for these future shows. Like there's this one guy, there's that one guy that I've met that he's a regular at these shows who actually lives in South Jersey. He wears white contacts with the, uh, all the time. And he's, all, he's always got a sick outfit on. Like the last time when I saw him last week at Johnny Brenda's, he was wearing a gem, a bolo tie with a, he didn't even know what the freaking gemstone was, but. Hey, that's all right. And much like Drac, much like Gary Oldman's Dracula, I kind of want to get those style shades, but in red or something close to that. And I do kind of want to try out. I've never worn tie tacks before. You know, the pin, the pin that they wear in the middle of the tie. The Undertaker had a tie tack during his early run, during his early years in the WWF. Lex Luthor had one on in Superman, the animated series. 
Yeah, I've never worn I've never worn contact lenses, but I want to try them out. Either your eyes are equipped for it or they're not. My childhood friend I've uh, admittedly I've never I've never worn I, I'm actually considering trying eyeliner for the first time. Well, the insane clown posse and psychopathic records they're horror core. Now, I don't think I don't know if uh Psychopathic Records is considered goth. I really don't. They might be like horror, a horror core. My favorite, my favorite horror core is the Grave Diggers, which is which consists of the RZA from the Wu Tang Clan. Speaking of which, I kind of passed on the opportunity because I was at Ghost Mart. I kind of passed on the opportunity to actually see the Jizza perform live. Another critical member of the Wu Tang Clan. The, the Wu-Tang Clan album that features the Jizza, their best one is Liquid Swords. And my favorite off of that one is Fourth Chamber. Especially Ghostface Killer's verse. No, it doesn't, it does, it doesn't necessarily work that way, MC. And you don't always have to wear black in order to be it, either. And there's actually certain there's actually some people that go to these events that don't actually go dressed up. In fact, I actually wore red at Warehouse on Watts and at at the Anchor Rock Club for Ghost Mart, which is a spooky themed flea market all and dance night. It was like a one in one. It was a like a six hour it was a six hour event. And I met a lot of cool people and I plugged one of the vendors that I met called dreadful things d-r-e double d no not that kind get your mind out of the gutter they they t one half of them taught me how to diy my own to make my own spiked clothing you get the you get the ones with the uh, hooks and you just poke a hole and just bend them i was thinking hot glue gun but nah i don't think that's as optimal I mean, I know how to make them, but I don't have the tools, the tech, or the resources, or the time, really. But whenever I do, I'll start making. I'll make my own. And one of them that I met at Ghost Park actually recommended pink to me. And my first thought was, I didn't say it out loud, but in my head, I was thinking of that. I was thinking of when Vegeta was like, "Men in pink, how bizarre." But no, I actually could make it work. I was going to, I tried looking up the, uh, because we're entering the warmer seasons, I'm actually wearing those uh, camp shirts, those bowling shirts that Tony Soprano wears or he wore in the show. But I get like, I get the plain design. Like I have a plain black one that I wore yesterday. And that's the thing. They're not, uh, the thing is, they're not always dressed up. They're not, they're not always that. Sometimes they go. They'll, sometimes they'll like wear. They'll wear like a white top and blue denim. And sometimes they they'll wear less. They'll wear regular docks. They don't always wear platform boots, which also aren't really platform boots. Aren't really my thing if for the for the uninitiated. Platform boots are the ones with the extended chunky, the chunky outsole that 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 makes you taller. They're practically like boot lifts. To me, uh, they're not my style because of how inelegant they are, and they're pretty impractical, which is why they don't typically wear them every day, like you would think. A prime example of platform boots is the ones me are the ones Mega Mind wore when he was putting on his on his signature cape, the Black Mamba, or his best one. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not that. I tried super hard to like ICP, but they're not that good. They kind of suck. And they're, 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 they were dead in the water the moment they beefed with Eminem, who pretty much ripped them to pieces. But I'll give them credit for being on the wrestling shows. He, he's pretty tight with Vampiro. They were, they were on TV during the dying days of WCW. Back in, w, back in 2000, they were the most... Them and, Vampiro, them and Vampiro were the most over entity in WCW. Yeah, it was in Philly. Yeah, it was in Philly. 
I almost, I almost went to, I was thinking about going to WrestleMania, but those tickets were friggin' insane. I know, uh, Mitch Kofsky went, I know that for a fact. And one of my friends in Philly was thinking about going, but I don't think, oh, he was, my friend in Philly is a huge Roman Reigns fan, and he was pissed when Co- when he finally got his comeuppance. Thank fucking God Cody Rhodes got the title. Th- it was good to see Roman finally get his comeuppance because his run was, the past four years, although he's the most over that he's been ever, it was still the tri- it was still the Triple H reign of terror on steroids, but now Co- it makes sense for Cody to have the belt now. Now that he's the biggest draw in the company, and I love I kind of love the storytelling of how with the fact that Drew went over as he should have, but Damian Priest cashed in, and I love the storytelling that he was constantly telling Seth Rollins that his obsession with the bloodline would be his undoing, and in a cruel twist of fate it turns out drew let cm punk live rent free in his head of course kayfabe obviously because it's a work he drew had let cm punk live rent free in his head and cm punk was on commentary during that world during that world title match and when drew won he took the time to try to gloat at punk and once he took his eyes off and punk pulled his leg and then and then started punching him and the next thing you know, Damian Priest comes sprinting down, clocks him in the head with a briefcase, and finally cashes in. Although I, I mentioned on Mitch Kofsky's raw, raw live reaction that I think Judgment Day is disbanding. And I think, well, Rhea Ripley, who's into goth and metal herself, she actually had to vacate the title. And Liv Morgan practically turned heel. I think Liv Morgan just turned heel. And Damien Priest, the the video package of his journey from his journey to the WWE and winning the world title, that 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 video package literally screamed babyface. So I think they're turning Damien Priest babyface. So I think Judgment Day is disbanding. But then again, now it's just a matter of how that group will do without them, and eventually they're. They're gonna turn Finn baby. They're gonna turn Finn baby face too. Probably. I don't know. Yeah, I, I heard that. I heard that Steve Austin was original. Was the original choice before Taker. I'm. I was happy to see Taker, but it, it would have been. I think it may have been for the best that it wasn't Steve Austin because Steve Austin. Is uh, Steve Austin is one of the most over. Steve Austin is arguably the most over guy in wrestling history, and him appearing, I think, would have taken. He would have absorbed a lot of aura from Cody. Steve Austin would have easily. Steve Austin will overshadow almost anybody he, that's in his presence. His presence will pretty much overshadow would pretty much overshadow everything. It would have been dope to see him, but I think it may have been for the best that he wouldn't that he didn't make it. Now don't get me wrong. I'm I'm one of the I'm one of the biggest Steve Austin fans, always have been. And that's and that's the thing that people forget about the wrestling business is you gotta be careful. You do kind of have to be careful who you bring in, especially when you're trying to get somebody more over than he already is. And that was something that they did back in the day. Like, for example, back in the territory days, they had they used to beg Vince Sr., give Dusty Rhodes some dates because my guys can't get over with him around. Sometimes when you bring... Now, that was kind of the risk with bringing CM Punk back is now they're trying to get... Now they were trying to get Jey Uso over. And to, not surprising, not surprising he's next in line for the world heavyweight title against Damian Priest and Damian and I and someone pointed out that there's early signs of Damian Priest turning babyface because he took he told the Judgment Day to not attack Jey Uso unless there's something unless he has something else up his sleeve oh absolutely Stone Cold 
Stone Cold Steve, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin sold mer more merchandise than anybody else. Although to be fair, he had a T-shirt almost every month, and he had a lot and a lot of good ones. My favorite Steve Austin shirt is, you know that you know that shirt. One of my guy, one of the guys at, at my work actually has a Steve Austin shirt where it's his half face, his half X-ray. It's the one. It's the T-shirt he wore when he stunned Vince McMahon for the first time. There's another shirt where on the front it says "Other Side Jackass" and on the back it's that same design. That that's arguably my favorite Steve Austin shirt of all time. Another one, another classic is. The I like the uh, like the old school one that everybody that everybody gets. There's th there's another there's another one I forgot about. No no no, it's the one with the uh, snake skull in the front, and on the back it says "Don't trust anybody" because it's my mantra as well. And I feel like that's one of the things that's kind of working out for me when trying when fi trying to find the love of my life is I don't trust anybody. That, although that can just as easily work against me, I'm not the big I'm not the biggest Logan Paul fan either. MC. Well, yeah, John John Cena has been has have been male pattern baldness for years. A lot of times, no offense, but a lot of time, all those years he's on that orange juice. And keep in mind, Cena's actually smaller than he used to be. That's and that's a sign of his age, because. For those of you who don't know, when you reach your mid mid to late forties, you start to lose your you start to lose your muscle mass, and there's a, although there are people that hold on to their muscle mass when they're fifty or sixty years old. That's usually because they're on HGH or some other kind of steroid. Like for example, C. T. Fletcher is a is a bodybuilder personality. He's a fitness personality. He's been he, he's been He's been in strongman. He's been in powerlifting. He at one point, I don't know if he still does, but he held the world record for straight curl. He claims that he's never that he wasn't on steroids yet. He still looked jacked when he was fifty-seven. He kind of still does today, but at the, uh, and that's not really a knock on him. But it's like you don't have to friggin' lie about that because who wouldn't want to look like that when they're fifty-seven? Yeah, a lot of male pa male pattern baldness is another thing with with men that reach middle age or when they've been on gear for as long as now the wellness policy is pretty inconsistent and they pick and choose who they want to punish but they they they've always have multiple people in WWE that are on gear. You can make the case that Drew McIntyre is on that orange juice. He's jacked. You can Braun Strowman, I would say so. Especially if those feats of strength, like pushing the ambulance over, was legit. Jinder Mahal, most definitely on steroids. Especially especially when you see the nipple. Another way you could tell somebody's on steroids is if the nipples start to point downwards. And I think that and one of the symptoms is gynecomastia, or gyno for short. Which is something The Rock suffered in 1999. And he had to get surgery on his chest. Which is why during those WWF title matches with Mankind back in 1999, he wore a shirt. He wore a shirt and track pants. The reason he wore that is because he was covering up his scars. Even though he could have worn, he could have worn a rock, uh, they could have made a rock t-shirt for him to wear. But, that's alright. I kind of like that, I kind of like that gear, honestly. I love that, I love how the rock... It, I was kind of I was kind of fooled by this, but somebody made they're, they're, they made this WWE 2K clip where The Rock actually wore long tights. Now, the thing is, I don't I don't think that would necessarily work. Just like how I could never take somebody seriously wearing trunks when they don't have the when they don't have the physique, like say say Triple H or Steve Austin or Goldberg, who are just at who are just regularly jacked. The Rock is definitely on steroids, especially when he's got more muscle mass when he's approaching his late 40s. There's no doubt about it, but that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, being on steroids, 
people misconstrue being on steroids as in incapable of lifting when that couldn't be further from the truth. Even when you do take steroids, a lot of times, most of the time, even when you do take steroids, you still you still have to put in the work. You still have to lift. However, when you take steroids, you can actually lift with bad form and still make gains. Now, Slitta was on here earlier. He's He's got his own non-sports thing he's got going. He's got a, he's got his training regimen. Now, is I almost had something to say about his latest one where he said it was a bicep tricep extension when the exercise he was doing primarily focused on the tricep. However, here's the thing. When you work with cables, there's constant tension on the on the body part that you're working on. So, for example, he's doing He's doing a tricep extension. When he pulls it down, he's working a tricep. But when he brings it back up, the constant tension is slightly working his bicep as well. Now, when you're working cables, yeah, you want to do the pull down for tries, and then when you and then set the machine to as low as possible to do the to do the up curls for the bicep. Now, either way, there's and both come in handy. Those are that's a perfect that's a perfect. That's one of my favorite bicep tricep supersets to do, honestly. Now, let me real quick. Let me answer MC's question or his his comment right here. No, you're not off topic. That's all right. No topic is off limits. What's my what's my take? What's my take on OJ Simpson? Uh, I don't really know. I don't. I'll, I don't think we'll ever know the truth about what happened in 1993. I partially believe he did it. You got. I thought the memes online were hilarious of him being in a white Bronco hearse, and then someone pointed out that there was a dead ass OJ Simpson reference. There was a de- there was dead ass an OJ Simpson reference in Shrek Two, where there's a guy on a white Bronco, and it was a literal white horse with a bunch of knights chasing him. Yeah, someone is making a meme with a bu- with a white Bronco hearse. It was it was it was a Bronco with a long back and the hearse symbol on it. And I first thing I thought was, I kind of want that truck, you know. That's another that's another thing. Another thing is uh, a lot of people in the uh, goth and alt scenes are into caught. Co- that's another stereotype of theirs is they they, they like to collect coffin theme stuff. And, and wanting to drive a hearse or wanting to own a hearse. That was one of the things I that was one of the things I showed to those vendors back at Ghost Mart is they really like the fact that they like that suburban hearse that I showed them, the 80 square body. The funny thing is when you get trucks, funny before I mention that, the white Bronco that OJ had, Steve Austin has a white Bronco too, but he has a silver side panel, so it's not necessarily the same, but it's the same it's the same era of Bronco. I think they were OJ I think had an early 90s, he had like a 92 or something, 92, 93. Steve Austin's was 1995. Steve Austin also had a black Steve Austin also has a black suburban that's exclusive to his LA But yeah, I, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about open a stream pretty soon for anybody that for anybody that wants to join. I, I I'm kind of reluctant to, but I I don't know how I feel about adding so many people. Yeah, I, I'll 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 post it for anybody that wants to join. Hold on. Oh, what the fuck? Hold on, let me try it again. Okay, I copied it. Alright, I copied it. There we go. For anybody for anybody that wants to join. It'll be it'll be open. Oh yeah, I, I oh yeah, I saw that. I saw that too. There was somebody who had a dead, a dead ass had a white Bronco, and the license plate said "Not OJ." <laughs> oh, the memes online were hilarious. Ghetto Gronk had a meme saying, 
Pat Tillman versus OJ Simpson in a heaven versus hell NFL bout. And it was and it was uh, Cena versus The Rock once in a lifetime. It was funny as hell. Oh, one of my one of my friends, one of my friends that I met last month that couldn't uh, couldn't attend the event this past weekend, and she was actually she's actually going through a rough patch in her life. I told her, "Hey, listen," and she was like going through a bit of a depression. I told her, "You just gotta." Take it. I just said, if you need anybody to talk to, I'm here. All right, we got somebody. Oh, we got RPF. Hey, good evening. Hey, what's up? Not a much. Well, besides, besides news slowly getting better as time goes on, of course. Of course, I still have to. I still have to live stream outside, which is fun. Well, at least it's getting a little warmer for you to do that. Gradually yeah. getting warmer a little bit. You know, even though I hate, I hate the weather getting warmer. Honestly, well, I'm not exactly a fan of heat waves myself. I'm not. A, oh, I, I don't hate. Hot, I hate. I hate hot weather, and that's a, a lot of a, a lot of us in the a lot of us. In the uh, goth and metal and punk scenes, we hate the heat too because we like to wear black, and we like to wear and we like to have sleeves too. So yeah, we, we, not it's kind of it's, a, it's another common stereotype is we hate the heat. I don't I don't miss winter all that much. I miss autumn. I miss October. But yeah, some of some of them I did actually show my Halloween alter ego. I mean, funny thing is, some of them that randomly start liking my posts, they always like they always like the posts with death. Uh, the <clears> next <throat> time, I, the next time I talk to the one I've been talking to, I'll I'll send her the uh, I'll send her my Halloween alter ego to see if he. The thing well, the thing know. about winter is, at least you can at least you can find at least you have a way to be warm. But when you're when when the weather is hot, I could literally be all butt ass naked, and I'd still be hot. And not this in a way, certain, and not and not in a way certain people might think. Sorry, I don't swing from that side of the plate. I definitely like winter better than the summer. The summer for what you said, some of what you said is. For me personally, it's always been harder to get cooler in the summer than it is. It's much easier to get warmer in the winter. Doesn't doesn't help that the price of electricity has fucking jacked up over the past few years. So, yeah, especially when you're living with people who can't manage money worth a damn, and they don't know how to use shit responsibly, and they gotta fucking cheap out and have the AC on as little as possible. So. I can't sleep hot. I cannot sleep hot. I need to be friggin' cozy. The fuck are you? The fuck are you talking about? Oh, 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 yeah. When they when they wear le when when girls start to wear less. I think I I think I know what you're talking about. But the thing is, I get to see I get to see that anyway. It's called the internet. Of course, obviously, I want the real thing in real life, obviously, and I believe I'm making, I'm gaining ground, and I'm taking massive steps in the right direction to finally make that happen. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping, that reminds me, speaking of uh, horror shows and stuff like that, I actually, Bones actually is down for going up to the uh, Jersey Devil Fable Festival, which is a horror film festival. And Joey... Uh, I, I gotta ask Joey. Uh, Joey doesn't really respond that much on Twitter, so I probably could ask him what horror co conventions he goes to because he's a huge fan. Joey Shakes is a huge fan of the horror of the horror genre as well. All right, we have MC in here as well. How's it going, man? And a much. Hey, RPF. Get, get, so get, get, long time no see. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to tempt fate, but you just 
but I just I'm just feeling a little I'm just feeling positive. Yeah, I know that I know that's that's a word that's pretty foreign in the uh, vocabulary when it comes to say sports, especially when the the teams, especially when your favorite teams don't play up to expectations that are either they're either not smart enough to make to do what needs to be done to get better or they have all the physical tools they have all the capabilities of being kings of the world but they never live up to it like for yeah. the prime example prime example is i still to this day say the the eagles should be five time super bowl champions but they fucking underachieve nearly they're the biggest underachievers in nfl history and your baseball team the phillies they're not good enough they don't have the fucking they don't have a complete roster. No. They don't have I'd say it. right now, you know, 22 is the best, you know, chance and opportunity to win one. Yeah, the, the, I, I hate to tell you that, of course, it's very early to tell, and I'm not that into baseball, but I think that window slams shut. I'm not, I'm not as familiar with baseball. Yeah, I kind of hate to I, say again, you know, I kind of agree with you. I'm not that familiar with baseball, but I don't know how I don't know how long the window is. Although the Braves, I, I think they had a short window too, but they made the most of it. The Nationals, they only had one year to get it done, and they made the most of it. Rangers might be the same thing. Well, yeah, that's the unfortunate it. thing about you know the Phillies' whole history is like I mean making the most of it out of the two World Series we won, but not continuing that like winning at least two or more you know what i mean it's always one and done essentially uh, uh, right at least somebody at least somebody's team won today although i think slit is braves one too i'm not positive i was just hoping that fucking game would end as quick as possible so people could make it onto the damn stream because that's the thing that's the thing with certain evenings is if there's something going on, it, it's a lot harder for people. It's a lot harder to get a decent turnout. And the thing is, going back to what I mentioned earlier, I prefer my channel to be smaller time because I don't get as many jackasses in here. All the people that show up are people that fucking support me. And it's like Axl Rose once said, there's two types of people, those who like me and those who can go to hell. All right. I'll be right back. One moment. All right. And uh, that's the thing. And if uh, the next time I get a chance to talk to Joey, I'm going to tell him straight up. No offense, dude, but I don't comment on your videos anymore because your comment section right. sucks. I had to grab another beer. <laughs> oh, you work six to ten. That's 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 four hours. Anyway. Yeah, I, I told you, I'm going to tell Joey that straight up, and I don't think he's going to take it personally. I don't think he's going to be that upset by that when I said I'm going to be, I'm going to tell him straight up, no offense, but your comment section sucks. RPF knows that, uh, knows that for a fact as well. In fact, I even mentioned the video that he made that I saved. Well, the thing with me is I'm well, getting... What can, I, what, can I, what can I say about the, uh, about extending Devontae Smith? It was something that needed to be done because he's your he's one of your top impact players. Unfortunately, well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, it's business as usual. Yeah, even 500 said it, and I agree. You know, Devontae Smith is like the best eagle on the team essentially right now. Yeah, I would I would say so, or at least one of them. But. <laughs> The, they, the team is just uh, the team has just been out of mind, but at least uh, and the, and the thing is, because of how happy that I the fact that I've been enjoying myself going to these nights and all that good stuff, it's gotten to the point where I'm not triggered by that logo anymore. I'm not triggered when I see it because for a while, every time I saw it, I would get mad because of all the failure, because of all the underachieving, because of. All the years where they've never provided me anything but pain. But when I when I went to the Philly punk rock flea market yesterday, 
one of the a couple vendors had some sports themed merchandise that they were selling and there was one stall that had tie-dye themed phillies 76ers eagles t-shirts which is kind of more of my brother's thing my brother um my brother and my sister-in-law they're they, they like tie-dye a lot oh you got you got a uh, kelly green Devonte smith jersey oh yeah i, just, I actually I'm have gonna, one I'm of those gonna, too. i'm just gonna point this out to you but uh i heard that the eagles midnight green uh, the eagles home jerseys i think it's just the midnight green ones i'm not positive are actually that color is banned in brazil because of some rivalry or something i don't know what the fuck's going on first of all and a bit of a disclaimer i'm boycotting week one because i think brazil is a fucking communist totalitarian shithole and we and shame on the nfl for even doing business with these corrupt cocksuckers in the first place yeah i understand that and yeah so, what's ridiculous I don't, know what the is... hell the, I don't know what the hell the eagles would wear instead i don't know what the hell the eagles would wear instead but i think either I, most likely it's going to be all white but i honestly believe kelly green might be the way to go for the packers because the eagles have a lot of rich history with kelly green against the packers yeah, I was Whether actually going to ask that. Are the Kelly Greens returning this year? Because yes, I saw that yes. you know the new Saquon Barkley jerseys are, are, are you know they yes. have Kelly Green version. Yes, it's not going anywhere. Neither, neither, neither jersey color is going anywhere. Neither alternate is going ever anywhere. Which to me is a win-win for everybody. Now, the thing is, I heard that the that the that a third helmet color is now going to be a thing which means the black helmet may come back in 2025. But I don't even know if I'll still be around by that point. A lot of things can happen. I said that this is going to be their last chance. However, if I do meet somebody, if I do meet somebody and I can, and she tells me that she's willing to watch the games with me and that she's willing to get into the sport with me, then that'll be enough to get me to stay. Because at least, even if they don't really do anything, at least I have somebody that will share the share the moments with me. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> I mean, I, I I don't. My feelings, my my animosity toward Kelly Green kind of disappeared into the wind the moment the black jerseys came back versus the Giants. I don't know why we, uh, why we waste them on New York every fucking time. It kind of annoys me. But again, going back to what I was saying, I think Kelly Green is the way to go against the Packers because of their rich history with them, whether it be 1960 when when Chuck Bednarik j tackled Jim Taylor to end it, or 1994 when they brought the uh, 1948 throwbacks back, or when in 1990, the infamous game where Reggie White took Tony Mandarich's arm and just threw him aside like the pathetic washed up has been that he was. And Tony Mandrus was supposed to be this hot entity, this Hulk Hogan like character showing up in the NFL. Turns out the guy was on steroids. He his his physique deflated and he had no footwork. So he 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 was garbage. And much like the Reggie White play is his version of Bo Jackson running running Brian Bosworth over. Like with Bo, with Brian Bosworth, it was how, how Bo Jackson ran him over. But with Mandarich, his signature moment was the game against Reggie White, where Reggie White got his arm under Tony's arm and just threw him threw him sideways and just made him look like an absolute chump. Of course, that's Reggie White, the greatest defensive lineman in NFL history. But still yeah i don't hate the packers but the real the one reason you could say i do is just because you know of reggie white because you know honestly kind of you know jealous of that you know he won a super bowl with them not us you know what i mean right although i've, I've mentioned in the past that reggie white made the right decision because his career and uh, no i i hate to say this but Philly was only going to take him so far. Of course, there was no guarantee 
that Green Bay was really going to do anything at the time, but it was a chance. Much like, much I know this is unrelated, but in wrestling, Chris Benoit actually did not want to leave WCW, but Brett the Hitman, heart of all people, funnily enough, said, hey, listen, you're never going to get the break you deserve unless you go to WWE. I know this is me of all people saying that, but trust me. Get out of WCW, go to WWE where you'll make a name for yourself and you'll have a much greater chance <laughs> at the break you deserve. And Saquon Barkley, I'm 50-50. On one hand, you got a guy who can actually be exp- – you got a guy who can ex- be explosive. I don't know if he'll still – now, on Barkley is behind the best, a much better offensive line, arguably the best in football. But on the other hand, we kind of tried this exact same thing a decade ago. DeMarco Murray, anybody? Of course, that was square peg, meat round hole. All I know is we're just going to have to wait and see. That's all we can do. And that's all we can do. The, one thing there one thing that is for sure is there is no guarantee of anything. Except for one yeah, thing. I know he's not the same, but uh, I don't know how much that'll matter. Only one way to find out, right? You talk about guarantees and so I tell you something. You talk about Joey Shakes uh commenters and, and Videos. I tell you something, man. You already told you this already. I'm at the point now where I really seriously want to hurt these motherfuckers. I do. I don't give a shit. I want to yeah, beat the I, shit I, out of them. I can, I I can understand them. that. I, I can do. understand. And I can understand that completely, especially with their fucking tr- their specific choice of words, where instead of actually trying to understand where the fuck you're coming from, they're. They their mindset is well. Your line of thinking doesn't line up with mine, so I'm gonna throw childish insults at you because you're not in, and I can do that because you're not in swinging distance of me. Well, give it time. See if I can't make that happen for you. That's the thing. That's the thing with us. If you're gonna fucking call out people, say we're too negative, then expect people like us, especially me. To say any personal mean thing I want, because I don't give a fuck. If you don't like I'm, me, we can fight. I'll fuck you up. You know what I mean, D? You know what I'm saying? I right. told those motherfuckers that. Hey, you don't like what I'm saying? I'll fuck you up physically. I'll fuck you up verbally. I'll fuck you up mo- mentally, emotionally, physically. I don't give a fuck. And Eagle Slayer, you can go fuck yourself. I'll fuck your ass up. You fucking hippie, ninety-six and nine Woodstock bitch. Fuck. Oh, here we go again. Uh, and, uh, I, I, I just want to. Early in the morning, yeah. shit. What the, oh yeah. The Funny. Uh, the thing is, my opinions about the team have already gotten me fucking online threats. And by the way, people have yet to fucking follow through with those. Like, the, I, I've literally been in the middle of fucking. I could be found in the middle of goddamn Rittenhouse Square, and I don't see any of them. I don't see no motherfucking body trying to find out nobody mm-hmm. there uh, yeah, people at yeah. the end of the day people are nothing but fucking talk so it doesn't really bother me that much anymore my thing about it is i don't even i don't even comment on those anymore because i already know what's going to happen i already know some jackass is going to fucking say something and then i'm just going to have to verbally lay the smack down i'm going to have to verbally stomp a mud hole in them and walk it dry that's the thing the crazy thing about me is that i like i like confrontations as you know, I want confrontations. I want fist fights. You know what I mean? But the people who are, you know, talking trash on a keyboard or in this case a cell phone don't. So, right. you know, they, they're hiding behind that. That's the difference between people like us and people like them, you know? And they, the thing is that it's okay to disagree with someone's opinion. Yet, you know, instead of being adults and talking about it rationally, like an adult, like for instance, like, okay, yeah, uh, I did that video last week about two weeks ago. Where I was defending Joey Shays because somebody, people were criticizing Joey for for Chris, the one of James Bradbury gone. Well, why can't people just be like, okay, Joey, I understand what you're saying. I don't necessarily agree with you, 
But I see, you know, I understand your point of view. Let's hope for the best. But that doesn't happen. Those th- people be like, "Oh, Joey, you're not a fan. You're not a fan, Joey. You're you're too negative. You know what I mean? You overreact." He has yeah, like just because no. that's, that's and that's yeah, another because of his own other, opinion. Right. Like, well, on the other side of the coin, there's also a thing that you could have an opinion that nobody else has. This hasn't. This is completely un. This is kind of not is unrelated to what you're saying. You could say in a video, you could say in a comment section like that, you could have the opinion of, I think Bradbury, if I think Bradbury could improve, I think he could turn it around. And then you're going to get like five jackasses give you clown emojis or all this other stuff. Like what, how the fuck, how the fuck do you know what's going to happen? The thing is you don't. No, absolutely and, and, not. And, and that's another that's another thing with these comment sections is they're they're fucking online mobsters, which is why another reason I don't take them seriously. Or, or like you said, you'll be in the minority and say that I don't have a good feeling about this team going forward. Or you'll say something that's completely left field, and then then the yeah. next thing you know, they're gonna fucking try to they're gonna try to vermintly. They're gonna verbally swarm you because that's how they yeah. fucking operate. Well, they didn't work yeah, on me. That's did today, it? like, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It didn't work on me. Remember Father's Day? Remember that? Huh? I told those mother. Yeah, I said a Eagles better win. Someone they're like, ah, you shouldn't be a fan of RPF. But see, some most people in that situation would ignore those people and not fight back. Now that I fight back, I fucking won. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's you just say you had a. People, I told those people. I said, hey. I Father's Day. I said, I hope all your fathers drop dead, motherfucker. And they were, and then I found out they were very offended. A couple days later, when I said, "How dare you say?" It? And I told them, "Fuck you. You want to do something about it? I'll fuck all you motherfuckers up and your dads up. Fuck you. I want confrontations. You know what I mean? The old RPF, whatever. You new for RPF. I want confrontations. I, that's what I say. You know what I mean? You're gonna talk right. your shit. I'm gonna talk better shit. You think you're tougher than me? I'm tougher than you. You know what I mean? I've been Eagles fans since 1988. All right. If anybody that can boycott games, it's me. If there's anybody can do whatever the fuck he wants, it's me. And Eagles better win Super Bowl 59. And to those motherfuckers and Joey Sakes, Father's Day, you want to come at me? I'll fuck all you fuckers up. I'll blind your fucking eyes out. You'll never see anything ever again, literally. You'll be blind. You need a fucking cane to get around. That's yeah, unfortunately, and, 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 and you know that's that. Thing, and that's another thing, Hayden, because everybody wants, because almost everybody wants to be correct. Well, me and RPF want to be wrong, obviously, but people say that. People say that, but yet uh, people say all this shit during the middle of a game or something. But at the end of the game, they're the same motherfuckers that are going to demand everybody to be fired. Or they're gonna tell they're telling us that we're too negative right now in the in the off season. But once the season comes around and the team doesn't play up to par by mid season, I'm gonna be they're gonna they're gonna be like I'll fire everybody. I'm like, didn't you just fucking change coordinators last year? That's not how this works. And yeah, unfortunately, that's a part of you know today's society uh, where like it's almost like nobody can have an opinion. It seems like anymore. No, you know what I mean? How about no fuck boy? <laughs> <laughs> how about get a life or end your own? Either way, <laughs> well, boy, you've had trolls in here, but that's a weird turn. I've never seen a faggot coming into your stream. <laughs> I, I I get these fucking weirdos all the time. I don't know where they come from. I don't know if they come from RPF's chat or, but Desert to claim, Desert tells me that I'd be getting them from him. Well, here's the thing: it's it's just fun, not a bad thing. He's not going to be mean and nasty, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure. And by and by the way, these are the type of people that aren't fucking man enough to. They they say this kind of shit. They say the kind of shit that you wouldn't be caught dead saying out in public. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like where you, what Worry Hyden said a few minutes ago, keyboard warriors, like they'll say something on the internet but that's not a, face to face anymore. That's another beautiful that's another beautiful thing about going out to the nights, going out to the city, going out uh, going out, meeting new people, all this kind of stuff. 
it kind of reminds you of how much different and how much of a different vibe that is altogether. And then, uh -huh. and then you call, and then you do this, and then all of a sudden you're re reminded of, the, of, the, of how of all these weirdos. Yeah, I haven't in a long time now, but yeah, I love going out, you know, I'm a chill person, so I love to go out, you know, chill, have a few drinks, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but whatever, whatever vibe, whatever vibe speaks to you. Yeah, yeah there are and confrontations and fights, but yeah, of, I've never been in a fight. There's a lot of, uh, a, oh, sorry. No, I was just saying I've never been yeah, in a fight at a bar, so, you know. Yeah, you don't club. really want to do that. You don't really want to no, do I'll that. get my ass beat. I'm a small little guy, you know. <laughs> It's not it's not losing the fight that you would have to worry about, even though that's one of the most humiliating things on the planet, getting beaten up in fucking public. But it, even though there's a possibility you might have it coming in certain situations, but the thing you'd have to worry yeah. about with this case is being fucking barred from an event and never being able to go back. That's what you want to avoid altogether. Right. Well, I shouldn't say nope. I'll lose, but, you know, I do stick up for myself. Like, I told RPF on my stream a few stories when I was a kid, but, yeah, I won't go there on your stream, but. <laughs> take, your, take your own advice, you keyboard warrior cocksucker. <laughs> <laughs> How about you get your fucking chest cavity ripped open? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> you got into an argument with a girl at a bar oh I've, I've gotten into an argument with somebody back in 2020 when i was still holding on to support for wentz when i was too when i was too positive for when i was too forgiving for my own good even though i i, I was 50 50 honestly i thought Jalen was going to be even worse but the thing is, Wentz should have been fucking benched during that first Dallas game. Oh, oh later, eh, Fizz? Glad you could make it for this brief millisecond. Dude, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what team you root for. If you fucking come on here with that disrespectful, rude pussy shit, then you're getting the fuck out of here. And you're going to get insulted on the way out. And, and one of the things I had, there was a conversation I had with Desert one of the last times he went live is he told me that he just blocks him. But I told him I, I like to fucking insult them on the way out. That's just how I like to do it. That's how I've always liked to do it. Because I like, I like, I like insulting them on the way out. It's fun. And I, and I yeah. do the same thing. I do the same thing to idiots on Twitter, whether it be fucking statists whether it be military industrial complex simps, Stepford apologists, which they don't usually, they, because I kind of drifted, the more I drifted apart from the sports community altogether, the more I started to distance myself from it, the less Stepford cocksuckers I've ran into. And for the uninitiated, Stepford means a fan who doesn't criticize the team for anything. That's, that's, it's actually in the Urban Dictionary. Look it up. But there's more. Oh, I didn't even know it was in the dictionary. Yeah. Stepford fan is in the Urban Dictionary. And the example, they were actually talking about the New York Knicks, I believe. Huh. And by the way, you think the you think the Suxers are going to beat the Knicks? I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, the Knicks are on the up and coming. I mean, it sucks to say because the Knicks haven't ever done anything since what the 60s but i think they have i mean obviously i'd rather play them than the celtics because if, if we lose we play the celtics but the I'm knicks about, you know i think it's probably going to go to at least game seven i hate to say the thing is the thing is everybody says oh i'll i'll, I'll rather i want to face anybody else but the celtics but it's like the celtics aren't the only team you lose to they were two winnable series against the Hawks and Raptors. So you could lose to just about any you'll lose to just about anybody. And I know and I know what people are gonna say. Oh, yeah, so it, your it Lakers. Is possible. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, I know that yeah, I know the Lakers would get fucking dog walked the soon as soon as they face a quality opponent in the playoffs. But guess what? I'm at peace with the Lakers. You know why? Yeah. Because 
at least they gave me, at least they gave, at least they earned it. They earned right. it by winning titles. The Blackhawks, yeah, they're not allowed to be mediocre because they earned yeah. their right. They earned the right because they had their glory years. And if it, and if they earned their years of obscurity. Yeah, I don't know what I the think, Lakers think, situation I, is, but I know if or so I'm following somebody. Sorry to cut you off, Big D. I'm following somebody on YouTube that almost wants the Lakers to lose in the opening because they'll play another team. I don't even know who they're playing. But it's it's not even a Laker fan though. It's a bronze stand. His name is Oprah Side. He's a famous, you know, bronze stand uh, that I don't I don't I don't I avoid LeBron tards. I avoid bronze sexuals like the plague because they're they're some of the biggest dumbasses in sports altogether. Yeah, he's a fan that followed LeBron his whole career. Wherever he went, he was a fan of that team. I don't mind. I don't mind somebody liking him. That that's not a problem. The problem is people saying he's greater than Kobe and Jordan and Kareem. I'm like the fuck out of here. No, he especially on the Lakers or LeBron. No matter how long he's played for the Lakers, he'll never even sniff. You know, Kobe. Uh, I agree. I agree. Although you can make you can make legit cases, but I take I rank Kobe over him all day, every day. Yeah, but unfortunately, still, Kobe did on the Lakers what the Sixers still can't do, and at least won one title, so. In the 21st century. Yeah, exactly. So, unfortunately, as or yeah, I'll speak for myself, as Sixers, I'll speak more for myself as a Sixers fan, I can't talk, essentially, you know what I mean? The, the, I, you gotta love people getting all up in arms about the Iverson statue. Yeah, he probably oh, should yeah. get a bigger one. Oh, yeah, I mentioned that a bit yeah, ago. Yeah, he probably yeah. should get a bigger one. But it's like, no offense, but the guy's never won a world title. I got yeah. Which begs the question, does Moses Malone have one? Because I think that's somebody that should get one. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah he, he, Malone, Moses Malone. Uh, the Moses only thing Malone I heard about the last the... MVP, the last Finals MVP they had, and, and yeah, by the, the way, only... that's the MVP that matters. The Finals MVP, the Super Bowl MVP, the World Series MVP. Yeah, not the regular M- season. To... And yeah, and I brought this up. I brought. Speaking of which, I brought this up in the past. There's people that thought that the MVP of Super Bowl Fifty Seven should have gone to the fucking loser. I'm like, what? How do you, uh, why, why should a Super Bowl, why should the lose, why should a loser of a team get an MVP? It should always go to the winner. Oh, yeah, yeah, I isn't remember that, goal, hearing about that. the goal to win? But they, th- they think it should go to the fucking loser because God knows what. Just because kind of Jalen Hurts kind of, you know, in a way outperformed Mahomes in the game, but not really because no, he, he didn't. didn't it didn't count when it mattered. You know what I mean? One guy like, turned the ball over. The other didn't. Case exactly. Low. Yep. I was going to say and, that. Yeah. And, Mahomes didn't turn the ball over. And one went three and out in, in the second half. The other didn't. Yeah. One but thing I about mean, that, you being the, small, the though. Three and out, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this, I'm sorry if this bothers some people, but I think the three and out was worse than the fumble. Because I think that had a bigger impact. If they didn't go, if they don't go three and out, they put points on the board, and the fumble is a damn yeah. footnote. You mean the now, opening like, drive, right? In the time, third, the big, at, at, but the at the third, same time, right? Yeah, it was like it, it was right. But I think it was right before that punt return. I don't, I don't remember what drive it is. I, I I refuse to go back and check. I refuse to look at any imagery. The only time I'll oh, ever I think- look at, I've already got. The only time I've ever looked in, I know I know it happened once. It was the uh, loser. So it would have been in the fourth then, right? Because the punt return, you're talking about um, it was, former I think giant it was the, uh, Tony uh, Darius Tony. Tony, right? Who our fa- who our fan base were mocking in the off season. I'm like, didn't he fucking score a touchdown in the in the Super Bowl? I, that's the thing. That's another thing about mm-hmm. my peers that people just don't realize is their la- their complete lack of self awareness. 
they'll say certain shit and they'll crap on a certain player when a lot of the same things can be said about somebody on their own team. For example, they'll talk a lot of shit about Russell Westbrook or LeBron or Anthony Davis flopping for referee calls, yet Joel Embiid does the same shit nearly every night and they barely bat an eyelash. Yeah, and I, I said this to the RPF. Bad. I hate how Embiid, like, the one thing I don't like about him, you know, too, is little contact, he'll fall. Like, he falls so easily. Like, you he barely touch him and he falls. Yeah, because he's... And when he falls, I kind of cringe because you never know when he's going to get injured, too. He's right. and, and, he, and he does that. He does that so he can get to the fucking foul line. But here's the thing. Here's the kicker. They don't call it in the playoffs. They don't really, call, they don't really call it in the playoffs, which is one of the reasons he... Teams are have are allowed to defend him, which is why he's such a playoff choker, which is why he shoots 27% in elimination games back-to-back -back in back-to-back -back years. Joe B can go fuck himself, all right? That's my thing. The, the, thing, is, the, thing, is, the thing is, my biggest problem is he talks a good fucking game, and then he has those performances in the playoffs, and people still try to prop him up with some of the all-time legends, saying that he's greater than Hakeem, saying that he's greater than Shaq. And they're comparing no. him to fucking Kobe and Michael Jordan. And it's like, this motherfucker is 0-5. He's 0-5 in the fucking in the uh, Eastern Conference semifinals, I believe. And he's the only MVP. I believe he's the only MVP ever to not make it past the second round. You really? Me, I didn't know that to, stat. Did. The way I see it, my challenge is, you want me to fucking change my mind about him? Talk to me when he wins the world title. Which yeah, will like never do. Like yeah, that's all that matters. Like, is say whatever you want. You say know, win a title, then you can be in those conversations. You know what I mean? Say whatever you, yeah, say whatever you want about. Say whatever you want about Giannis, but he got it done at least once. Say whatever you want about Nikola Jokic, but he got it done at least once. Jason Tatum, at least. Jason Tatum, he's definitely he definitely has a choke job in the finals, but he's made it as far as the finals. De'Aaron Fox choked last year against the Warriors, but I'll give him uh, slack because that was his first playoff appearance. I'll never forgive the Sixers for not drafting Tatum. Tatum was just dope, but should have been a Sixer, man. Yeah, but that uh, yeah, obviously he wouldn't be the only, not the only one they passed. Yeah, but they also passed unfortunately, the that's why the tra Celtics traded uh, with us for the third pick is because they knew we we're gonna take uh, Fultz. I think they knew we weren't gonna take Tatum. They should have taken Tatum, just like they should have taken, yeah. As Big D's referring to, yeah, in 13, we should have drafted Giannis in 13. And then, and then there was 14, also, yeah. we and then there was also 15. Devin Booker. Yeah, 50, I was going to say but that. They're, 15, they're they're draft Booker. Their draft, blu their draft blunders go all the way back to the 80s where they passed on Sean Kemp and Mitch Richmond. And in 16, they should have drafted uh, Ray yeah. Ingram. You, you could have got that right Stephon guy from Toronto. Yeah. What's his name? Psych Pachel, whatever it is. I can't say his name right. Sitcom from Toronto. You, gotta, you should have got him the 16 draft. Brandon Ingram, uh, Jalen Brown, right? No, you trapped Ben Simmons instead. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, I'm like, I'm tired of this shit, man. I don't watch the games. I boycott every Philly funny team at this point. But it's just funny fun thing is, me. funny thing is, I'm one of the original. I'm one of the original leaders of the Simmons game is trash committee. Oh, I've taken I've taken heat in the past for saying, "Nah, this fucking guy's overrated. This guy's game is so limited. It, it, this guy, all he does is fucking pat his. All he does is dominate the ball. All he does is ball dominate on offense, so he can get his precious assist stats and abuse." The soft NBA rules where you can't play defense, and on de and on defense, a lot of times he's got the guy in the corner. He'll sag off and get easy uncontested rebounds because that was the, that was the thing that was the thing people creamed their pants over was the quote unquote triple doubles. They liked to to prop him up. They used XX. They used what I call, and Bruce Blitz came up with this one: XXYYZZ analysis. Points, rebounds, assists. Instead of, no, I'd rather have a guy who 
can score at will offensively, can give you buckets like Jimmy Butler could, and clamp on you defensively. I want to respond to something Hyden said about, uh, you know, I, I like Maxi, yeah. But, you know, but the Sixers still fucked up. They should have drafted Tatum. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. We fucked up not getting Tatum. Fuck, fuck. We fucked up bad. So did and the we Lakers. Both instead. I mean, we, that's the thing. We drafted Tatum should have been a Sixer, flat out. He should have been a Sixer. Booker should have been a Sixer. Giannis should have been a Sixer. Fucking, uh, and then we get Butler and we trade him. You know, and see, every time I fucking talk about this, every fucking time, I think you can tell by now I'm already pissed off. Uh, absolutely, and rightfully so, and you should be, too. Yeah, you yeah, right fucking me. should be, man. I'm like fucking 30, we're in my fucking 40s. Look at, oh, God, here it goes. Early in the morning, I'm already lazing my voice and shit. Like, you, meanwhile, oh. meanwhile you, you, you've you seen, you've yeah, seen the you, likes of, yeah. you've seen the likes of Larry Bird, you've seen, Jimmy Johnson, you've seen Joe Gibbs, you've seen Bill Parcells, you saw yeah, you, you saw Lawrence Taylor in his prime, you saw yeah, Michael Irvin in his prime, Emmett Smith in his prime, Troy Aikman, Doug Williams, Mark Rippin, Bill Sims. Yeah, unfortunately, as a Philly sports fan, you've seen it all in the worst way. Well, Dee, let me tell you something. Dee. You yourself have seen your Lakers win three fucking titles. That's one more than I've seen combined in 40 years almost being a Philly sports fan. Which is why they earned the right to have down years. Which is why yeah, when somebody yeah. says, oh, Same the Lakers are this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, and? They had their glory years. Same with your Blackhawks as let, well. Let me, know, let, me know when you let me know when you achieve yours. Same with your Blackhawks as well. Right, they, 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 their, their glory years didn't last long, but they made the most of it. It started to turn downhill when Corey Crawford got injured, and that's the thing. It's amazing what a goalie can do for a team in hockey. Goalie, yeah. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I'm, uh, hockey can be very hard to get into, but the thing about hockey is the goalie is the most important position in the fucking sport. Well, obviously, I've that. Yeah. Exactly. Once Corey Crawford went down. The entire team went down, and when even when Corey Crawford came back, he was not the same. That's what well, having a great that's what having a great goalie can do for a team. Well, Ken, at least you got memories. I don't have those fucking things near this MC Philly. We don't have no memories of the nope. Flyers. Zero. We have yeah, no like I said the other zero. night to RPF, I said, you know, you've seen more championships than him or possibly even me will ever see any Philadelphia team win, like combined. Yeah, it's fucked the, up. The, the funny, the funny thing, the thing about the Flyers is they overachieve more often than they underachieve, which is like this year, for example. I thought we were supposed to be worse, and we could still have a chance for playoffs. It ain't looking good, but not because most of their pro most of their problems, they're 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 just not good. They've just been fucking. They've just been irrelevant. Since 1976, well, when they beat up well, on the Flyers, Russia. did choke a lot. Well, the Flyers did choke a lot in the Eric Lindros era. I don't ought to know because oh, I was absolutely. a teenager. Then. Absolutely, they, they fucked up in the Eric Lindros. They choked a whole bunch of years, especially the year 2000, when they had a <laughs> three games to one lead against New Jersey in the conference uh, finals, and then lost every game after that. I'm still mad over that one. Oh, yeah. And in your series in 2010, uh, Stanley Cup, we didn't have a chance, really. The no, but, you, no, but your peers were your peers were so fucking full of themselves leading up to that. They they thought it was destiny. They thought it was they thought it was theirs for the taking, and that there was no way they were going to lose. I'm like, ah, oh, nah. I think Blackhawks win that one, well, but I, well, I, I didn't know what I was talking about. Nope. Well, and unfortunately for you, that was the start was, of your, you know, little dynasty. School. And I keep in mind that was back in high school. Where I was talking to people in person about this. And keep in mind, my high school had a bunch of bandwagon fuckers. I knew the Flyers were not going to beat the Black Cause We had Michael Layton as the goalie for crying out loud. Michael Layton yeah. sucked. And we had was Corey, and Corey Crawford was entering his prime. And I knew the Flyers were going to lose him. Of course they did. In dramatic fashion. 
losing at home. You know, <laughs> in game six, I knew that was going to happen. That wasn't a surprise at all. One thing, I, one thing I forgot to bring up earlier is one of my guy, one of my, one of my dudes that I met at these goth nights. The other night, he was actually wearing a Eagles jersey there, but I think it was a Michael Vick jersey, but the nameplate was removed. I went to see the back to see who it was. It it was. It was definitely a Reebok jersey because they have the, they have that patch in the middle that says equipment on it. That's how you know it's a Reebok. Oh, yeah. They're the only they're the only NFL jerseys that have that on the front. All the practice jerseys, the practice jerseys also have that. And the if Nike it was midnight green, NFL. yeah. The Puma has regular NFL starter. Same thing. Like back in the ninety, back in the nineties, during the uh, during the Buddy Ryan. Reggie White years, their their uniforms were made by Russell Athletic, and then when we switched to Midnight Green, Starter made them, and by 2000, Puma made them, which is why I hunted down a Puma Juice Daily jersey, which I don't have. Why Puma? Because that was 2000. That was a that was a callback to the pickle juice game. That was the last Eagle jersey I had. It was a Juice Daily jersey. Now way back in 2001. Uh-huh. Yeah, Did you, you lose probably, it? You probably had the. Uh, like a bootleg Reebok one. Yeah. And, 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 and by the way, very similarly, you don't necessarily have to dress up and have the all DIY, the whole nine yards to be considered goth. Much like how you don't always have to have merchandise on to be a fan of a team. All you got to do is just, all you got to do is tune in, represent and show legit care and actually want them to win. And want them Not to be long great. I've been struggling with that comment that I've heard from people over the years, you know, about you know merchandise. Not just on the YouTube, but a long time ago, you know, because you know they if you don't have the merchandise, you're not a fan, which is total bullshit. You know, some people can't afford to have caves like Desert has or Eagle Cave. Some people can't afford jerseys and stuff like that. You know, you have to pay your bills. You have to put food on the table for yourself for your family. You know. You know, it's not easy for people to go get these merchandise where you got Eagles hat or a cup or a jersey or a t-shirt or something or a DVD all or whatever. To, all you all you have to have is the general care and the general the general care about them. Michael, yeah, uh, the thing with yeah. the thing with Michael Vick is he was all right, but I think Michael Vick was incredibly overrated. And people in our peers still claim that he was better in Philly than he was in Atlanta. No, he wasn't. He had one year, and then he got injured every year after that. He had one. He had one great year, and that yeah, was it. Yeah, 2010 was basically came, it. For him. That's another. That's another thing, Reaper. Of course, obviously, you can buy cheap, bogus jerseys very easily for cheap. But most uh, most jerseys are the, are the ones you could get. Run up to about one hundred and seventy nine to two hundred and forty nine dollars. Not everybody's got that. I certainly don't at the moment. Yeah, it's just a steep, uh, large price. You know, to get those things, not easy at all. I know for Michael Vick, I actually like Michael Vick better than McNabb, honestly, because I hated McNabb that bad from a personal level. So I don't mind Michael Vick. In other words. Huh? I hate McNabb, and I don't mind Vic, so that's my opinion on Vic. I don't mind Vic either, you know, and a big reason why is he willingly gave his starting job up to Nick Foles in 2013 and said, he's the guy, he's the guy you should start. He's clearly better than me. He's who you want to go with, which, which is, is a something- very selfless move on his part. Yeah, but that would have never done right. that. Gotta, no, of course not. Look what he did that alone, you know? Yeah, look what he did to Kevin Cobb, even though Kevin Cobb was never great to begin with. But still. McNabb so tried, to, to, McNabb tried to help. The thing is, on one hand, it was like McNabb never wanted to leave, but at the same time, he didn't want to give up his, he didn't want to give up his spot. He wanted to hold on to his spot for as long as he possibly could. Even though he was slow, he was becoming a liability in 2009. He was a massive liability in 09. He was blatantly costing his games. Although Morningweg was not helping that matter, making him throw 40 times a game. He was overthrowing guys left and right. 
He was under throwing guys. He was making dumb decisions. It was his time was clearly up. The injuries, the injuries and the choke jobs have caught up to him. And that's the thing. Injuries can end careers pretty early. So can big, so can major losses. That definitely shortened his lifespan. But in 09, I wanted Michael Vick to replace him. Yep. I wanted Vick to take his job. Because whenever, and Vick, was a backup whenever, Vick, much. whenever Vick stepped onto the field in 09, he threw better. You saw massive improvements. The 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 one time Michael Vick threw in that wild card game against Dallas, which we don't talk about that. That was the moment I McNabb was done. He was done. I wasn't much of a fan then. In those days, you know, the late mid oos and late oos because I had Ty to read a McNabb. They knew yeah, they were never going to win nothing. And also, they were greatly overshadowed by the Phillies. Well, especially in 08, because when the Phillies won the World Series in 08, basically my life and RPF's life. Yeah, 08, 09. Yeah. When, you go, when you go out, the, when you went out to, the thing is, when you went out to bars, when you went out to malls, any public event, any public gathering, all you saw was Chase Utley shirts. All you saw, you know the, you know those red ones. The, the, they're just plain red T-shirts. They say Phillies on the front and on the back, it's the name and number. Chase Utley ones were everywhere. Everybody had one. I want. I was. I was trying to be cool because somebody wanted. Somebody got me one. Somebody wanted to get me one. I said, "Get me Raleigh Banez or get me Pedro Martinez." Because I wanted to be unconventional. Now, I'm not really a big baseball fan, but I did root for the Phillies in 08, 09, and 2022. Well, I know this, D. When and I do, like, World... I do like Pedro Martinez. But when the Phillies won the World Series in 08, October 08, I was so like, thrilled and happy about it that pretty much in Philly sports, they were the only team that existed. I didn't watch any Sixer games the rest of the Season, I didn't watch any Flyers game. I didn't watch any Eagle games, really. I didn't care about the Eagles in 08 when they lost to Arizona. It didn't matter. I, I was still happy with the Phillies title because it took me 20 years to finally see a team in Philadelphia win a world title. Right. I was so elated about it that I didn't really pay much. I didn't pay no attention to any of the rest of the teams. Even the Eagles, I watched a little bit of the NFC Championship game and quickly turned it off because I lost interest. You know, but like, yeah. I kept thinking about the Phillies. You know, kept, you know, and it went on until the next season, you know. And that's how I was so thrilled about that. that the, it was the base in RPF world. The Phillies are the only team that exists. Funny, uh, funny you mention that because in 05, 06, 07, when I still lived in my old neighborhood with my childhood friends, sports was a, a fucking afterthought. It was dead to me. And I wasn't even angry. I just didn't even feel anything. I was. It was just. I was just focused on. I, w I was just focused on video games, Star Wars, Revenge of the Sith, all that other stuff. Sports wasn't even. Sports was just a footnote. Yeah, I didn't worry about like, sports. We were focused on like Batman, the Hulk, like the Mar the old school Marvel. <laughs> I only really started getting back into football in '08 because. When I I was for I ended up having to move again. I ended up having to live with my tyrant father for a few years, where I couldn't go anywhere. And one of the very few things I could do was pop back in. I had Madden 06. I decided to pop that back in after watching that episode of Family Guy where Peter Griffin played for the Patriots for that episode. It kind of and I started and I popped back in Madden 06 and I started having fun with that again. And then I started getting back into football by that point. And, it, and it, watching football or baseball, it was like the only time I could, I ever really had a chance to eat really good food by that point, because the, those were back in the years where I had to live on, I had to live on canned soup. I had to live on canned soup and Campbell's Chunky. It, it was kind of, it was a rough year, but there were a few moments yeah. where every weekend we would go to the, we would go to the bar. I've told you in the past, I told you in the past, my father my father has had a is a fucking drunk, but it was kind of glossed over. But it, it was one of the good things is it, I was able to go to the bar and we were I was able to eat good chicken wings. But that to eat hot chicken wings because that's one of 
my favorite food my favorite food is fried chicken and i cook my chicken thighs the same way they that they cook their wings at some of these bars that i used to go to with no breading although i kind of do although i kind of do put flour i do kind of flour my chicken because back where i where i'm living now people complain about the chicken the thing is when you when you cook chicken without putting anything on it it gives off a really nasty smell you smell nothing but the uh rotting bone obviously the meat's still good but you get that weird bone smell that everybody complains about but when you flour it you put garlic powder and stuff like that no one smells it you, and it smells good but i cook it the same way i i i have i make it sure it has little as little breading as possible i just put hot sauce on it good as hell getting pretty hungry. Oh, yeah. I'm getting, getting pretty hungry right now thinking about it but when i get back i have some italian sausage on pretzel rolls to cook oh there you go you really like those pretzel rolls huh hell yeah they're be they're, they're the only rolls i get now and they're pretty hard to get they're hard to come by but if you live near a Sprouts grocery store, they have pretzel rolls, both hot dog and hamburger. And I would put yeah. I would put that on a sausage patty or so, or Italian sausage links. And I've also cooked my own I've cooked my own steak meat, and I would put that in the pretzel rolls, make it pretzel steaks. Although I think. I think pret little pretzel steaks are also available at Philly Pretzel. I wanted to go to Philly Pretzel yesterday after I got back from Philly, but they were closed because on su it was on a Sunday, and on Sundays they close at three. Yeah, pretzel roll that sounds good, especially with mustard. You know, w with whatever you eat. Well, except for cheesesteak, I don't think I put mustard on cheesesteak, but you'd be a bit you'd be surprised by some people. Some people will put will flat out put mayonnaise in them. But and anyway, ketchup. Oh, that's disgusting. I think. But fun fact. Fun fact. Over a century ago, in the city of Philadelphia, there was this. Hot, there were these Italian immigrants that were hot dog vendors, and they ran out of hot dogs one day, and all they had was this shredded beef. So they had to have that to substitute it, and they gave yep. one, and he gave one sandwich to a cab driver, and the cab driver told him straight up, "You need to start selling this yeah. instead." And that's when the steak sandwich was born. Awesome and then growth. another guy yep. said, another guy said, and one of them were like, let's add cheese and fried onions to it too. And that's how the cheese steak was born. Disclaimer, uh, and for those, for the uninitiated, if it doesn't have cheese in it, it's a steak sandwich. When it has cheese in it, it's a cheese steak. That's how you tell the and, difference. And I bet one of those aren't affiliated to either Geno's or Pat's, I assume. <laughs> No, those are those are those are kind of tourist traps. So yeah, I've, never heard of that. I've the never best, ate the, there, the but best, I've always heard the best they're cheese, overrated. The best, steak, the best cheese steaks, the best steak sandwich places are your local bar in the city. Yeah, There's I heard place. like D'Angelo's or John's roast pork. I heard is really good. I I, I heard good things about that too. Well, I I wanted to ha I wanted to try the burger at Johnny Brenda's, but I didn't get the chance. But that's all right. There's always the future. Actually, yeah. what is it? I heard was it Tony Luke's? I heard that's changed now or something like it's right. named something different or whatever. Fun fact: Tony Luke Jr. made a cameo in Invincible in 06. Really? I think it was, I think it was 05 yeah. or 06. In the movie, yeah, in the movie, movie. He's the he's the big he's the fat dude with the green sweat, uh, the green outfit oh, with, with the, the cape. Green. Yep. That's oh, Tony that's Luke him. Jr. Oh, I don't think I knew that. Yeah, that's Tony Luke Jr. Huh. They actually yeah. they, they used they used Franklin Field to design the vet the vet's interior, and they used CGI to to design its exterior. Oh, for the movie, yeah, yeah. Never no, worried. Very few people can actually That's speak right. on the vet. I had to miss the vet bad. I grew up at the vet, you know. Yeah, I miss that place. That's what you call when it was hardcore Philadelphia, as in fans and everything. I yeah. went to seven hundred level, man, a couple times, and it was uh, funny. Was that, place it, that, oh, going. Funny thing is. People are giving FedEx Field shit for having sewage leaks, but 
the vent had sewage leaks too. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. And they also and they all and it and their astroturf was so god awful it had cracks in multiple different places. Mm. But I do miss the atmosphere. The place itself was, I thought, decent as a kid. But I really didn't care about that. It, the atmosphere is what I liked. You know, the atmosphere was great around the stadium. And well, I didn't, never went to an Eagle game. I went to a couple of Phillies games. And I've been to 700 level. And even the Phillies games, you know, it's, it's, it's nuts. Especially you know, the last one I went to was in 1993 against the Giants. And it was nuts up there. I was in the left field upper deck. And there was, you know, fights all. There were a couple fights I saw in the upper deck. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was. If you wore deck. different, if you yeah, wore different colored jersey, ago, that or even near if, there. If you okay. wore a different colored jersey, you were fucked. If you wore a different color, if you wore in the Phillies case, if you wore New York Mets anything, boom, you were you were done. If you wore the New York is, Mets the, anything, the thing about that. The thing about that place is it was less it was less for the team and more against the visitor. Yeah. It was one of those yeah. places where it was more primarily against the visitor, kinda like how Oakland was. Yeah. That's what kind of oh, pisses yeah. me off now. I see like, you know, Sixers games and Phillies games, for example. I see like Mets fans like almost taking over Phillies and Knicks fans at, in you know, at the F Sixers games, I see tons of Knicks fans, and I'm like, what the hell? Like, some almost well, taking over. Like, yeah, why well, are you letting them take over the Wells Fargo? Like, ridiculous. Well, Wells Far oh, Wells Fargo gets friggin' invaded all the time because the, yeah. cause the fans of those teams have grown apathetic, and rightfully so. Yeah, it's sad, to be honest. Ap but I think... I, the Flyers, you there's no denying, and it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that the Flyers they've reached a very dangerous level. Apathy. They yeah, know, the worst thing you could be is apathy. They, the worst yeah. thing. No, I guess it's no mostly hope. people. I, I think I think they finally accepted the fact that there's no hope. There was no hope whatsoever with the Comcast Spectacore running the show. They've proved yeah. the Comcast Spectacore are some of the most corrupt. Are some of the most incompetent bastards to ever own a sports team. They've owned, yeah, at, one point, so they've close, owned every, but... at one point they've owned every Philadelphia team. They've proven time and time again that they have no idea how to run sports teams and they haven't what's bothered. What's the, the Flyers on what's the Flyers on fall? I mean, they won a world title in almost fifty years. That's their fault. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. yeah they're and running their fan takes them over, it seems, all the time. The only way like, they can get themselves out of it is to win a cup. That's the only way it's going to change. They never win a cup. It's never going to change. Yeah, it's right. pretty sad. Even Ranger fans are laughing at Flyers fans or us now because Dude. the Rangers went 50 years before they won a Stanley Cup. Now for us, we kind of broke that, unfortunately, and now it's going on 50-plus years of not well, winning year a Cup. Next year will be 50. Next year's 50. Yeah. So you're, telling me they have, so you're telling me they have the longest drought? Actually, they don't. This Toronto Maple Leafs actually have the longest yeah, and they, but the and, they have, next and, they have, and they have a bunch of titles too. The Maple Leafs' last title was the '66 '67 team, and oh. uh, and if I'm not mistaken, they have the second most behind the Montreal Canadiens. I think they have a long drought too. Yeah, 1993, 92, 93 season. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me. Don't ask me how I know some of this stuff. I used in my downtime in my downtime at schools when there was like nothing going on. There's, yeah, it's I pretty long, read, but I used to the read, Canadian used to read world record books when they were. Yeah, I used to read I'm a lot of kids world record books. I'm yeah, I know Montreal you is books? pretty much. That's, yeah, that's a long well, time, but I know the Canadians are like the Celtics of the NHL. Like they've won, I think, one of the most titles out of all hockey teams. The 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 Montreal Canadiens, they're actually right up there with the Yankees with uh with <laughs> world titles. They have yeah. 24. The Yankees have 27, the most unbreakable record in sports, and they're paying for it today. Well, I yeah. actually did, but I actually did all this knowledge. You, you're very smart when you talk about this. You read, you know, the Canadians, you know this, you know that about sports. You're very knowledgeable about that. But, but it's like, I actually flat out, like, 
you did you do what I did back in the day in terms of reading books and newspapers? Because that's how I got smart in sports was reading Delaware County Daily Times and reading newspapers and stuff like I that. World, I read the world record books. They're, they're some of my favorite books ever because it wasn't just sports records, but it's like all types of records. Like the biggest, the biggest blue whale that anyone has ever seen. Like the biggest, the biggest animal, the biggest animal is the blue whale. The smallest is the hog nosed bat. Yeah, I heard something about sports somewhere about the records and, and the stuff. That's all I knew about Canadians. Yankees, of course, when I was younger, and Celtics and Lakers. At the time, the Celtics had more, and the Celtics didn't have their 18th yet either. But right, and the the strongest animal is actually the dung beetle. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. It's the dung beetle, followed followed by the rhinoceros beetle, who both can lift over, can carry over a hundred times their body weight. Oh uh, yeah, so you can the, the, find a dung you, beetle and it wouldn't crunch. For those, yeah, for those of you out there, no, not the not the crunch, not the stag beetle. For those of you, no, I'm for saying those, you could step on a dung beetle and it wouldn't get squashed. Uh, I haven't, I haven't done that research. I haven't researched that, but they can carry a hundred times their body weight. Wow! But, and for those of you, for those of you who have played the Pokemon games in the past, Heracross is based off the rhinoceros beetle, and he can lift a hundred times his own body weight. Mm. Yeah. Right. Going back to what Hayden said. Yeah, the best steak places in in the city are your local bars or your local mom and pop shops. But then again, that's the same with anything else. Like my favorite pizza is King of Pizza in Cherry Hill. And they're they're a tiny franchise. There's only two chains in the entire state, in the entire world. Like the, oh, it, it, the, the smaller franchise. Like anything, anything else, smaller franchises are always better because they don't have to sacrifice quality for mass production or mass profit. Like when companies get bigger, their the quality gets worse. Wawa is a prime example of that. A lot of fast food chains are prime examples of that with all the fucking chemical crap they put in stuff. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, I, yeah, I, um, I want to, uh, I probably got, I'm going to probably head to bed in a few. I'm getting tired, but uh, thanks for having me on. I just wanted to say thanks and appreciate you. And uh, thanks no for problem. joining my stream earlier and good to see you, RPF. Uh, no yeah, I'm, 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 about, I'm about to end this myself anyway, anyway, because I got to get out of here before the cops show. Anyway, it's been good talking to you. All right. Yeah. Take That's it fun. easy. Have a good night. All right, later, man.